hello lovelies in this video the brilliant tim is going to be looking at bias and gender this is for your a level psychology now there are lots of names and dates and facts and studies in here that you need to be able to remember for your exams so to help you remember everything over my website there is a brilliant course with all of the facts and dates and names that you need to remember <laughs> Bias can be defined as altering your results, your conclusions, your methodology, or even your whole approach to psychology based on gender. Differences between genders can be either minimized or exaggerated. Minimizing differences between the two genders is when differences are overlooked, ignored, or even just forgotten. On the other hand, exaggerating gender differences is when these differences receive too much attention or focus. They are exaggerated. In today's world, gender is an increasingly fluid and controversial topic. Most psychologists think of gender in terms of displayed or chosen gender rather than birth or biological gender. There are two main ways in which gender bias is displayed in psychology, alpha bias and beta bias. Let's begin by looking at alpha bias. Alpha bias is when the differences between males and females are exaggerated. This type of bias can often be used to negatively portray a gender, as is so often done in the media, or to confirm existing cultural biases and stereotypes, for example, that women are more emotional. The differences between the genders are sometimes exaggerated using biological factors. To take an example, many people assume that women are naturally more protective than men. This comes from a preconception about biology, that evolution has programmed women to protect their children. But evolution has instilled a protective instinct in all parents, regardless of their gender. To take a second example, many people assume that men are more logical than women. This is usually down to their own bias and preconceptions, rather than any hard evidence or facts. This has obviously never been conclusively proven by psychology, or indeed by any other sciences. Both of these are examples of alpha bias. Beta bias is the exact opposite of alpha bias. It's when the differences between the genders are ignored or minimized. Like all types of bias, this can be deliberate, for example, to manipulate results in order to confirm some existing stereotypes or preconceptions or even political views. Or it can be not deliberate. It can be accidental to present or interpret data in a way which confirms existing cultural biases without meaning to. This commonly happens when studies or research has been done using participants of only one gender, but the results from that study or piece of research are then generalised and applied to the whole population. Let's take an example. A study on 100 men finds that young men are less likely to conform. This is then misapplied to generalise the result that all young people are less likely to conform, when the study could actually only draw such a conclusion about young men because young men were the only ones studied. Research and studies in psychology can also be androcentric or estrocentric. Androcentrism means male-orientated. The research or the study views males as being at the centre of culture, society and politics. In the case of psychology, this usually translates to treating male behaviour as a cultural and social norm. This can have many consequences. Studies done in the past, especially in previous decades, which used only male participants, may have been applied to the whole population. Or, gender differences in the behaviour of women can come to be seen as abnormalities and exceptions to these social and cultural norms, because these social and cultural norms have been set by male researchers doing psychological research which is androcentric. That research has set male behaviour as the norm, and therefore view differences as meaning that female behaviour is outside of that norm. Estrocentrism is the opposite, it means female orientated, and this is when female behaviour is seen as a cultural and social norm. This is theoretically, at least in the past, much rarer, as men were previously so dominant in the study of psychology. Today, as gender equality becomes more widespread, it's entirely possible that estrocentrism itself is also becoming more widespread. Both of these, however, are gender bias. As we've seen in many previous units, proper research design is absolutely critical to obtaining results from that research which is valid and which is reliable. Unfortunately, improper research design can cause gender bias. Often, this is completely accidental, but it can be deliberate. 
When a research project begins, an aim is developed, as we've seen. Care has to be taken to ensure that this aim, the very foundation of the research, is not inherently biased itself. For example, studies on attachment often unintentionally become estrocentric, while studies on aggression often unintentionally become androcentric. As you may expect, the selection of participants can also introduce bias. Many early experiments done were often using university students as their participants. Back in the past, especially more than 50 years ago, university students were predominantly male. This caused androcentrism. That androcentrism wasn't deliberate, it was accidental, but it was caused by inherent bias in the participants. Participants of different genders in research must be treated in identical ways as much as is practically possible to ensure that there is no gender bias. Speaking, for example, to female participants in a different way during a study, for example, on memory or attachment or conformity, could very easily bias the results. Researchers themselves may also have pre-existing social or cultural stereotypes. While not deliberate, this might cause them to accidentally be biased when they choose anomalies, for example, to eliminate, or when they choose methods of analysing the data and the way in which they present their conclusions. While that bias isn't deliberate, it is a factor. For example, when observing participants in a naturalistic study, researchers must not record behavioural abnormalities based on if they are abnormal for that gender, but if they are abnormal for society as a whole. By recording behaviour in that way, gender bias is eliminated. The general public and the wider media may well have strong preconceived ideas and biases about what a psychologist looks like and sounds like. Quite often, these will be androcentric, they will be biased towards men. To take a specific example, many members of the public and much of the media have an image of a psychologist which is derived or based from Sigmund Freud. They will therefore have a higher opinion of researchers who look or sound vaguely like him. This can also result in the media only reporting studies and findings or results which have been found by individual researchers who match this social and media cultural image of a psychologist, an elderly white man. There is limited space in professional scientific journals. They can only contain so many articles and reports. They are therefore more likely to print stories with a strong positive conclusion. This can therefore lead to alpha bias. Studies which exaggerate the differences between the genders become more likely to be published. They make a good headline. Many theories that have been developed in psychology, especially if they were developed over previous decades or even centuries, show strong androcentric bias. Mostly that's because androcentric bias was the cultural and social norm of the day. To take an example, Sigmund Freud mainly described male behaviour as the norm. He paid little or no attention to the behaviour of women. When he did pay any attention to the behaviour and thinking patterns of women, he did so entirely in the misguided context of them being abnormal, outside of the cultural and social norm that he had determined. Ash's theories of conformity, to take an example, were developed using a male-only sample. This led to them being strongly, even completely androcentric. Some other theories, especially those into gender, like BEM in 1974, are strongly beta biased. They downplay or they ignore differences between genders. Quite often that can be from the best of intentions, but they are still biased. <laughs>